Hello, my friends, and welcome to the show. Hopefully, you can hear me. Hopefully, nothing's going wrong. Hopefully, everything is where it needs to be, because you know the deal. I've already forgotten to do something. Ah, I'll do it later. Who the, <laughs> Who the flub cares? As you can see, I've been running around, and my face is like some sort of tomato. It's red. I had a thousand things to do. So I thought I'd do the podcast at five o'clock today. And even then, time gets away from you, but that's okay. That doesn't matter because we made it online at the moment with no problems at four minutes past five. You are watching me live on YouTube. Thank you very much. Please do like, share, subscribe, and do all that craziness. And if you are listening on the podcast feed, you may be saying to yourself, Simon, where was the podcast on Tuesday? Well, because we had so many tech issues and it was me just moaning and groaning, I was like, no one needs to listen to this. Not even I needed to be a part of <laughs> part of this. So it's just going to be on the abyss. And again, you can find it at Simon Miller if you do indeed follow me on YouTube. Mostly, I hope everyone is doing okay. Big shout out to patrons, patreon.com for the Simon of 316. That's how you can support all of my content and this podcast, which I earn no money for. But, um, you know, you got to throw these things out there. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, we have no idea what's going on in our lives. And otherwise, is there anything else that we need to pimp out? I don't think so. I will say, if you were going to WrestleMania weekend, make sure you come to the Dark Arts and Pandemonium shows on Wednesday. You can find all this on my Twitter at Simon of 316. Same with Instagram. Uh, and then on the Sunday, I am wrestling at Mitzvah Mania, where now it has become Simon Miller versus Brian Zane. And yes, we are talking about YouTube's Brian Zane. Now, I know he put a promo out today. I haven't got around to watching it yet, but I most certainly will. So it's going to be Team Miller versus Team Zane. I've got three guys. He's got three guys. I'm going to be in the ring. He's going to be in the ring. So if he has said anything I don't like, I'm going to whoop his ass. Now, it's in the morning on Sunday, so you won't miss WrestleMania night too. But if you would like to come down, please do. Same with the Wednesday show. I'd love to see you there. Shake your hand and say thank you very much. And as always, you have something to say, you have a question, you have a statement, or you just want to call me an absolute a-hole, which you're allowed to do, make sure you send me a super chat in the YouTube chat, and I promise to respond in whichever way uh, feels right. Okay, well, of course, we're going to focus on AEW today because AEW Dynamite was last night. That's kind of just how the, the podcast has filtered out these days. Tuesday is WWE heavy. Thursday is not AEW heavy, but neither of them are AEW heavy. We just talk about the things that are in the news, and I want to talk about the start of AEW Dynamite when good old MJF came out to have his rebar mitzvah, and not only was he wearing his kipper, he had his tallet on, and now look, representation is so important. We know this. There are some people that think that it's not. I don't want to talk about those people today. You're allowed your opinion. I disagree with you heavily. I don't need representing in this life. I'm a bald white guy. I got Bruce Willis. I got Patrick Stewart. I got Jason Statham. Focusing on the baldness, I got The Rock. I got Vin Diesel. I mean, we could do this all day, right? <laughs> There's a lot of, lot of bald guys. Video game FPS front covers have had um, bald, guy, <laughs> bald guys locked up for years. However, I must say, from a personal point of view as a Jewish man, seeing come, somebody come out with all their Jewish attire on, like something we've unlocked in a video game, I liked it a lot. I just did. And I suppose what it did was it ties into your childhood, and it ties into your history, and it ties into your past. And I just thought it was absolutely fabulous. I don't think I've ever seen that in wrestling before. I mean, most of the Jewish takes in wrestling have always been offensive or stereotypical or a parody. Which, look, that's just life, right? You know, I don't think wrestling should do that. I think it should be left to other avenues, but whatever. We're not here to talk about that today. But I can only tell you how I felt. And that's why I did think it was one of my favorite segments ever in AEW. But not only that, moving away from the Jewish thing, although when they were playing Hava Nagila and he was up on the chairs, I was like, this is it, man. I've been to this wedding. I've been to this party many a time. Let's uh, smash a glass with our foot. Um, but then the fact they tied it into Sammy Guevara coming out and Jungle Boy coming out and Darby Allen coming out, I was like, this is great. This is what I want from AEW. You could not get this um, in, in WWE or uh, Impact Wrestling or New Japan, etc. You know, these are four guys that have been with AEW from the beginning, I do believe. I don't think anybody came in afterwards. And we've seen them all develop and grow and evolve and flourish, 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 and all these... Uh, in all these different words, and I just thought it was cool. I just liked it. And I don't know what we're going to do now. Are we going to do a four-way? Is it going to be a triple threat for the number one contendership? Do we do singles matches, which could probably take us throughout the end of the year? Do we pick one of these guys to dethrone MGF? Again, I'm not so sure. I think it's a conversation to be had. But I genuinely liked it, and I genuinely enjoyed it, and I just thought it was so well put together. Now, as I have found out after the fact, as I always do, because I watch these shows as naked as I possibly can, figuratively, not literally. Although I'm sure, given how long I've been doing it, there must have been one show I watched naked. Maybe it was really hot, just whipped my clothes off. Um, the, 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 the slight issue seems to be, should we have gone as inside a baseball as we did? 
in the sense that Darby Allen mentioned people moaning on Twitter and MGF mentioned all the backstage fights that Sammy Guevara has had. I'm just going to tell you straight, I don't care about this stuff. I just don't. Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe it is a detriment to the company. Maybe it's not. Maybe it helps. Blah, blah, blah. I just never look at wrestling that way. I literally just look at it from a very selfish and very individual point of view. When I go into my internal brain, as opposed to my external brain, and I say, did I like that? Did I not like that? Did I have a good time? Did I not have a good time? And I loved seeing these four guys interact with each other. I love the fact we kind of had a pseudo babyface Sammy Guevara for a little bit. Uh, Jungle Boy, you know, used to say he was scared of promos. And now he's smashing out promos. So that was awesome. And, uh, you know, Darby Allen is one of a kind. He's a unique creative character, as he spoke about. So... This kind of, this just spoke to me on so many levels. The personal stuff with the Jewish, um, you know, the Jewish spin. And then you had, you know, from a guy that's been watching wrestling a long time, it was like, okay, here's something that only AEW can present to you. Nobody else can do this because these are guys that we've invested in to the point that when they all do come together, it it, 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 felt, it felt fresh. I really don't know where we're going to go with it because once that opening segment was done, there was no hints. I don't believe anything happens on Rampage, but I'm not entirely sure. Um... So I think it's something to be excited about. And I certainly am excited to see how it evolves. I mean, we have, the next pay-per-view is Double or Nothing, which is May. So we've got two months, basically. Two months and three weeks, or two months and two weeks. That's a long time. So I don't know if MGF is going to go through all these guys or what he's going to do. I'm kind of intrigued by what the, um, by what the plan could be here. But that's good too, which also ties into the end of the show. I don't know the answer. And you should know the answer. Sometimes you should. Sometimes you should know the answer because it means we're doing coherent, simple storytelling. And I guess we can probably figure it out. But I wouldn't call this a cliffhanger per se, but it was certainly a planting of the seeds. And then we get to the end of the show, the main event. I thought that triple threat trios match was awesome. Jericho Appreciation Society, great. Elite, great. House of Black, great. And then when all of a sudden done and House of Black have got the win, you know, you finally get the tease with the Elite and Hangman Adam Page. The BCC, who are fully fledged heels now. I keep seeing people go, oh, no, they've got bad guy tendencies. Ain't no tendencies here. This ain't no octopus. This is a bunch of people <laughs> cheating and kicking ass and doing uh, uppercuts all the time. Like, these are people running wild. Like, these are people doing bad things. So as far as I'm concerned, they just have adapted to that. And I think they realize that too, especially in Canada. And just as the rest of the Dark Order has been taken out and Evil Luna has gone to a local medical facility, which means that Hangman Adam Page is all by himself. The elite get behind the ring, the BCC bail. The cowboy has no idea what's going on. And just as he starts to turn, Dynamite goes off air. That's good wrestling television. You don't need to see the interaction. We don't need to see them have a promo. We can all start guessing and deciding what does this mean? And surely it means they're getting back together. And then I, what you do with that then, I don't know. There's no quadruple belts. And don't get any ideas, AEW. We don't need a quad, quad belt. We have enough championships as it is. But I thought the way we bookended the show, essentially with our main event guys being the dudes that have main evented in the past, and the opening segment being the dudes that will main event in the future, it was fantastic. And I thought Kenny and Mako, they're all great. Jericho was great. I'm not going to name names because the Bucks, everyone was brilliant. But Kenny and Mako, I suppose, because they were in Winnipeg, which was his hometown, maybe had a little bit of a bee in his bonnet. Just think he's fantastic. I think he's wonderful. And there is this contingent of the internet that don't like Kenny Omega. And you're perfectly allowed to have that opinion. I don't think the things they say and the way that they treat him is very nice. In fact, I think it's deplorable. But I genuinely think he is a generational talent. I think he has changed wrestling in many ways. And I think he's a massive influence. And I think he'll be a massive influence to come. And I also think that's the same with the Young Bucks. I truly do. I do not believe independent wrestling or even the... Uh, creation of AEW would exist without them. And you can say that for a lot of people too, but I'm just focusing on the people in this match. I mean, Chris Jericho would be another guy that you would put in um, you would put in that category as well. So again, to start the finish, to start the, ma the, the show that way and then finish this way, I was like, this is a great episode of Dynamite. And look, as I always talk about, make sure you check out Ups and Downs for Dynamite Live on What Culture Wrestling when we're done here. And if you have already seen it, thank you very much. Go watch it again. Why not? I will always watch a show, and I'm not going to hand out downs for the sake of it, because there's enough YouTubers doing that. You don't need another one. I get it, right? Sometimes you just want to tune in and have fun with wrestling. But I'll always give downs if I think it's deserved, but I'm not going to go out of the way. And sometimes I'll finish an episode of Dynamite, and I'll be like, you know what? It was okay. There was nothing that was truly bad, but maybe there was nothing truly good too. However, again, I'm not going to be a negative Nancy for no reason. But this Dynamite, I thought was fire. C constantly. There was nothing I didn't like. Um, some people said the opening segment went too long. I actually thought it went quite quick. So I don't know what that says about me. I love the fact we gave the main event a good, what, 25 minutes, whatever it was. I actually thought that added to the to the weight of it. And, and if we can continue on with this, I think it will all be good for AEW. And I don't care what the rating is or what the demo is. I'm interested by it. And I like to see it from a statistical point of view. But it doesn't affect my entertainment of the show. Doesn't affect how I watch AEW. Doesn't. 
It's the same with WWE. I want everyone to smash it and make a bunch of money. Shout out to uh, Ayush Kumar in the super chat. He just threw money in there. What a lovely thing to do, Ayush. Thank you very much. And a shout out to the Hebrew Hammer as well. Can see why you are <laughs> joining in today. The rebar mitts for celebration had me on the floor, lol. Me too, dude. It was amazing. Guy was wearing a tallet. And not because someone had said, oh, you want to wear that stupid tallet thing. Nah. He was wearing it because it's part of his heritage. It's part of his religion. I got my tallet. Somebody said you should have worn it on ups and downs. I ain't there yet. I don't want, not in a bad way. I just don't want it to come across as I'm being disparaging or insulting or offensive or anything like that. But I did. Um, yeah, I truly loved it. Truly thought it was great. And there was a bunch of other good stuff throughout the stuff as well. I love Jeff Jarrett versus Orange Cassidy. If you want to argue that's a sports entertainment segment of proceedings, okay. I don't mind sports entertainment. In fact, I'm a big fan of sports entertainment. And man, was I wrong about Jeff Jarrett. I hold my hands up and I apologize. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about because when he was first signed I was a bit like do I really want to see Jeff Jarrett in AEW and I didn't to be completely honest for whatever reason I just went with my gut as I always do and I do believe I gave that segment a down however over the last six weeks eight weeks 12 weeks whatever it's been he totally understands his role he's so damn good and much like um, Sting Tony Khan books him in a way where he does come across like this legendary figure and I actually think it's done him the world of good and I think he's increased his stock I think he's reminded everyone of the impact he has had on wrestling. And I, if he had won last night, I'd have been totally cool with it, right? As long as he loses it quite quickly afterwards, because that should be his job. But uh, I hope we keep doing stuff with him and Jay Lethal and everyone else in that crew, because they, uh, they, make, me, they make me laugh, and I, and I enjoy them. And that match especially was just absolute shenanigans. And it was absolute the whole time, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Jeff is going to win, Jeff is going to win, and then he doesn't win after he gets Orange Punch. But there was guitars, there was Satnam Singh throwing a peep around like they were children. You had Jay Lethal <laughs> with his fake injury. <laughs> Tons of Dutt being an absolute ass. I, I had a great time. When all was said and done, I was like, sweet, Orange Cassidy won. Don't know why Trent took so long <laughs> to help his mate. That was a bit weird, but I had a good time, and it put a smile on my face. Shout out to my man, Spaz Phoenix, and make sure you check out his podcast too. Uh, big love to you in the chat. See, he's always so nice. How would you book the AEW pillars, Jungle Boy, MGF, Darby, and Sammy versus the NXT pillars, who I believe to be Gargano, Champa, Balor, and Cole, versus the WWE pillars, interesting, Miz, Theory, Knight, and Waller. <laughs> <laughs> also, I posted a review for the movie Screen 6. Thanks. I need to see that movie. How would I book it? Well, I don't know. I don't think anyone is going to agree with you that Ms. Austin Theory, uh, LA Knight, and Grayson Waller are WWE pillars, but I see what you've done there. I mean, if you were able, if you had a Forbidden Door show that was um, WWE and AEW related, I don't really know how you would do that. This is the problem with that kind of a show. It's different with New Japan and AEW. I think mostly because... You know, you don't see the New Japan wrestlers as much because you have to go out of your way to see them. Whereas these are all people we're familiar with. I guess if you all had them in the same company and you had one person going over, I still think Adam Cole and MJF are the two that you break it down to. And I think that's the feud that we should do in AEW too. Once we're done here, I think uh, revving, AEW, uh, revving Adam Cole up as the AEW major babyface is, is the way. I think that's going to benefit everyone. I think it's going to have somebody on top that is almost the antithesis to MJF, which is what you need. You need a good, good guy. You need a good, bad guy. Um... And his match is next week, I believe, or maybe two weeks. No, it's 17, 18, 19, 21, 2, 3. No, it's two weeks' time when we get the All Access show afterwards as well. But yeah, that's, that's probably what the Double or Nothing event is going to be, which brings up a very good question, because I think Adam Cole should probably defeat MJF. But then you have to beg the question, what happens with these four? Maybe that's why we've done it. Maybe Adam Cole is going to have a feud with somebody else. We'll get through Double or Nothing. We'll get it all out. That's when Adam Cole will win. And then we have all these months, but we have Derby, Jungle, and Sammy Guevara. To, to, to get us there. And I'm happy with all of this. I'm happy with Adam Cole being in that position. I know he's not a pillar of AEW, but he's a top tier star. And I don't, you know, I, every time I say, oh, he's not very big, I don't care about people being big. I don't. I've got MMA for that or boxing if I want weight classes. In wrestling, I want everyone versus everyone. That's the genius of it. There's no governing body, <laughs> you know? I mean, there are for certain aspects, but when it comes to the wrestling, again, you can have Brock Lesnar versus Omos which is silly because they're both massive, but you wouldn't be able to do that in another sport. Uh, shout out to Otis Willon as well, who just put some money in the super chat. Otis, that's very kind of you. Uh, I massively appreciate it. Um, and I look, I, I seem to be alone with this too, which is fine. I enjoy being on an island all by myself. I like all the outcast stuff. I do. I didn't understand what the hell Ruby Soho was going on about when she was like, oh man, the bitches are here to piss on the air. It's like, we, no one talks like this, which is the skit we did on AEW. But I like her as a heel. I think she's great. I thought Soraya, I don't even know I can say it on YouTube, so I'm not going to say it, but I thought Soraya saying the T word, that's hilarious for people over here in the UK. If you're an American, let me know what that means over there. I don't know whether it has the same impact, but I was dying. I was like, I think she got fined, and it could probably be true as opposed to a work, but I thought that was genius. And I think, I just, and I just like it, and I like the fact they're feuding with, I'm going to miss someone, Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter, 
Riho, Willow Nightingale, and Sky Blue. I think you add two more people to the bad guy side. And we do blood and guts. Why can't we do women's blood and guts? I'll tell you why, Slaphead. Because there's always someone that goes, oh, women shouldn't be doing bloody matches. It's so dumb. Now, you can say you don't like bloody matches, you don't like violent matches, you don't like gruesome matches. That is totally cool. But if it's cool for the men, it's cool for the women. And it should always be that way. As long as everybody involved wants to do it, Let's say we're going to do the fork spot again. Ruby Soho's like, I don't want to do the fork spot. And someone goes, well, you're going to have to. That's bad. Don't make people do what they don't want to do and not comfortable with because bad things will happen. But if she's cool with it and Britt Baker is cool with it, which I think both of them are because they've both been involved in bloody matches, you don't have to watch it, but you've got to understand that it's parity in wrestling is so damn important. Can you imagine having that? I think it'd be nuts. Women can't believe What? Like, I understand that there is a, a certain way that the world sees men and women, but... If women want to bleed in wrestling and you've got a bunch of men bleeding in wrestling, then go nuts. Have a good time. I'm, I'm, I'm never going to get upset with it. And I think this should end with blood and guts. That's how it should end. I think it'd be awesome. Where we go after that, I don't know. I'm intrigued to see who Jamie Hayter's major uh, opponent's going to be. I would presume Ruby Soho because she just turned heel, so that makes sense. And Ruby Soho can lose. I don't think that's going to be a problem. I still think at some point, Brent Baker probably needs to turn on Jamie Hayter. But, you know, that, I mean, that is a shame. We were so close to doing it, and I think we probably should have pulled the trigger. But then, as long as when we go back to it, we just get it done, I think that would be totally cool. Shout out to my man, Spaz Phoenix, again in the Super Chat. Dude, you support rocks. Uh, Simon, you need to come to Toronto. Not only do I want to see you fight for Destiny, but we're getting Forbidden Door 2. That's true, I was going to talk about that later. We're also getting Impact, Rebellion, SmackDown in August, and we just had Sammy Roman. I mean, this is good. Why haven't wrestling companies been going to Canada more? Canadian crowds are also almost fantastic, as the Elimination Chamber proved. Um... All I can say to you, is my friend, is I, I, should get into, I will get in touch with Destiny Wrestling. If they want me and we can work it out, I'd love to come. That would be a dream for me. I love Canada. It's one of my favorite places on the planet. And any kind of abroad booking, booking is, is mad. Hence why the WrestleMania stuff blows, blows my brain. But I will definitely come to Canada for something. Be it an AEW show. Or maybe even Forbidden Door 2, which is awesome. Tony Khan announced that yesterday as part of the Canadian tour in June or July. I can't remember now. Probably July because June is double or nothing. I imagine we're going to do Will Ospreay versus Kenny Omega 2 on that show, which will be crazy. Um, I mean, there's so much we can do that we didn't do before. I mean, we're going to do Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr. People have wanted that. Obviously, Brian Danielson wasn't able to do the last show. But you could do him versus Akada, him versus Tanahashi, him versus Naito. I mean, we could do this for days, man. I would take him versus anyone on that New Japan roster, to be completely honest. I mean, I don't think we've ever seen Brian Danielson versus Will Ospreay. You don't want to see that? I certainly do. So, lots of fun stuff coming this year. Um, and the Double or Nothing weekend now is crazy. I could be wrong about this, but you've got Double or Nothing. You've got one of the Saudi Arabia shows. They've moved Rampage to Saturday. And then from my own sort of personal book of stuff, that's Super Strong Style weekend for progress. So if you're coming one of those three days, I'm going to be hosting those shows. I don't know how I'm going to get that all done with the ups and downs. I'm going to be a very tired man, but I'll do my best. Shout out to the Hebrew Hammer in the Super Chat again. Thank you, my man. I appreciate it. I cannot wait for your, uh, Tamiro to come back. Where the flub is he? And beat MJF for the title. Well, I'm not sure whether that latter half is going to happen. However, where is Miro? That is a, I do not know. I do not understand. The rumor mill is always saying, oh, well, it's a creative difference. And he was going to be the guy in the tournament. Who took his place in the end? Was it Lance Archer? I can't remember. I can't even remember what that tournament was. But he was definitely pitched something that ultimately ended with him losing. And he said no. I miss Miro. Look, I don't want to talk about it too much because I have no idea. It could be a personal issue. It could be a health issue. Maybe it's a great issue and he's making a bunch of movies. Again, I have no idea. But as you all know, if you watch any of my stuff, Miro is one of my favorite wrestlers. And I truly hope that he, he is back soon. Even if it's in WWE. I'm not trying to stir up Shib or anything like that. I'm just such a huge fan of his. I just want him back on TV. I don't care if it's Impact. I don't care if it's Ring of Honor. New Japan. Over here in an English indie promotion against me. <laughs> as we are here too if you're coming to canterbury on ukpw this saturday come down that was gibberish and then tidal wrestling this sunday huddersfield if you're in those areas come down watch me wrestle you can leave after i'm done i'm kidding watch the whole show but um i, I don't have an answer with you for miro but i mean look if someone said to him simon's coming back tomorrow on some random show to be agf for the title rampage i suppose do it that's how much i love miro i think he's untapped talent we don't know. We don't know the situation, so it's hard to speculate. And shout out to Archer Knight as well in the super chat. Thank you, Archer. Appreciate it. Greetings from South Africa. Isn't that crazy? We've got people from South Africa listening. Uh, you always put a smile on my face. Would love to see you wrestle live one day. Man, if I ever come to South Africa to wrestle, I must have done something pretty damn cool. But that is like a dream come true. So, um, yeah, I, I would absolutely, um, I would love to do that. I truly, truly would. And my friend, thank you for tuning in. I have no idea what time it is in South Africa 
but the fact that we have somehow reached the globe <laughs> is very humbling to me and it puts a smile on my face um i liked qtv too i know what an idiot what a fool if you've watched any of my stuff you should know this it was goofy wrestling i don't mind that powerhouse hobbs is involved he can be the serious part of that but i like the whole tmz parody i like the fact that what i'm pretty sure was a real situation with wardlow's car uh, the break-in has now become story because it kind of confuses my brain i'm like well, i don't know what's real and what's not real i just like this group in general i thought it was pretty good i think it was well worked i thought it was something different Maybe not exactly what I would have done with Powerhouse Hobbs. I just think sometimes I want a big man that can slap meat to slap those meat on big men. But you could actually argue this is more creative. We've had lots of monsters in wrestling. And it's not like, uh, what was his name? The Funkasaurus. <laughs> you know, it's not like that kind of a deal where we're like, well, this guy's just going to be a monster. Then he comes out and he's a dancing dinosaur. That was probably too far in the wrong direction. This is just probably adding a little bit more personality, a little bit more interest. I'm happy to let it play out for now. Ultimately, Powerhouse Hobbs is the TNT champion. And that's what's important. That is what's massively important. So, no, I was totally cool. I was totally cool with that. And I really enjoyed the Dark Order Blackpool Combat Club tag match. I thought that was awesome. And, of course, it tied into the finish too. So that was nice. And the Jade Cargill stuff. I actually thought it was pretty well done. Uh, I can't remember the other, the other wrestler's name now. I'm so sorry. I watched so much wrestling Nicole something. But I know she's a hot prospect. And I know that she's got a great future ahead of her. But there was no point debuting Taya Valkyrie and then just having her lose. What is the point? I mean, I don't think you should ever do that. So the fact she's now involved in a feud with Jade Cargill, and I know she's got a match on Rampage, I think it's a nice way to do it. I mean, the problem with, it's not a problem. The thing that I would do with Jade Cargill is get her into bigger programs. So if we do do it with Valkyrie, awesome. TBS Championship, Jade Cargill versus Taya Valkyrie, again. We've got a long old wire to the next show. Build it up, sell it, make Taya Valkyrie feel like a threat. And if you want to have her win, I don't have a problem with that. Look at Jade Cargill. She's a star no matter what we're going to do. I don't really feel like there's much stock in her 54-0 and record. Not in a bad way, but it's just been going on too long, to be honest. So her losing, probably get a great reaction. It's going to get the other person over. Taya Valkyrie has the experience to, you know, know how to use that and climb the ladder, potentially. And I also think you can then insert Jay Cargill into other situations. Maybe she can be in the women's championship picture. Maybe there's other people she can feud with, as Tony Khan doesn't want to mix right now because he's trying to keep those two championships separate. But I thought it was well done, and she got a good pop, and yeah, they, they, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm very excited about the Acclaim versus, I keep calling them 2.0. I don't think they call that anymore. Matt Menard telling us that his nipples got hard about their acclaimed rap video earlier in the day. And I was like, well, that's just wonderful to hear, isn't it? They're both great. Angelo Parker is great. Matt Menard is great. I've um, been able to chat to them a little bit. And they're such wonderful people. And it's so cool to see how far they've come. Because don't forget, when they were on NXT, they were somewhat of a niche, right? They were. Everyone knew how good they were, apart from maybe WWE. So the fact that Tony Khan picked them up and now they're just smashing it. I think it's awesome. I think it's great. And it makes me feel warm and fuzzy in my tum tum. Shout out to QPR forever as well in the super chat. Hey, Simon, never change. You are a top dude. Thank you, QPR. And I know we had a little bit of a chat this week. So I just hope you're doing okay. I know you're going through a few things right now. Sending you all the best. Sending you my love. And I really do hope in however long, few days, few weeks, few months, however long you need, you can get back up on your feet. Not great that QPR got beaten <laughs> by Blackpool the other day. But that's why football's great, right? It's a distraction. You can rant and rave and, um, and we can move on. So yes, terrific episode of AEW Dynamite. Love the opening segment. That is going to remain in my heart for a, for a long old while. And again, I got a bunch of questions. Who does MJF feud with? What are we going to do with the Elite and Hangman page? Blackpool Combat Club are here. How does Brian Danielson fit into that? When is Brian Danielson coming back? Who is Adam Cole going to face? <sighs> so you see... And it sounds like we're going to do Jericho Appreciation Society and House of Black, given some of the stuff that happens on Rampage. That's also interesting. So, um, yeah, there's, there's, I think there's some good stuff on the horizon. And just to underline it for the people that always ask, I'm always going to look on the bright side of life. Even if some shows get all ups and that kind of destroys the entire um, <laughs> setup, <laughs> then so be it. I don't care, man. I got real problems in my life. And the last thing I'm going to worry about is, uh, you know, what is or isn't going to happen in wrestling right let's do some news um to see what is going on uh vince the vince mcmahon pandemonium movie has apparently been shelved now this was a movie that was going to be made by wwe studios that was going to be a biography on vince mcmahon and um he nixed it <laughs> so who knows why but apparently they had a script they had actors and then he decided he didn't want to do it and ultimately i suppose if someone was making a movie about me and i didn't want them to do it i would expect them not to do it but they did seem mighty pissed off but it just made me chuckle i think the netflix documentary is still happening 
But I don't know. Obviously, all the controversy around Vince McMahon. Although there was a lot of updates about his backstage at the Raw where John Cena was on. People saying that he was at grilla position with Bruce Pritchard and Triple H, but he wasn't saying anything. He didn't, um, you know, kick up a fuss or anything like that. Do I think probably after WrestleMania, he'll be back in control to a greater degree? Yes, I do. But once again, I'm just going to let this stuff play out. You know, I'm not going to get worried about it. I think WWE is doing a great job right now. Um, even if he did book Omos versus Brock Lesnar, so what? Two big guys can kick the crap at each other for a while. I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and see how it plays out. I don't need to worry about things that haven't happened yet. It was really cool news. I think The Undertaker was on the Chris Van Vliet show. Shout out to Chris. What a good dude. And uh, he was really mad at his WrestleMania whenever he fought John Cena. I can't remember which WrestleMania that was. Because he had got in tremendous shape. Because that was a year or two years after the Roman Reigns match. Which wasn't great, as The Undertaker himself has admitted. So he, you know, he got in shape. He rehabbed all his injuries. And he was all ready to go out there and have this sort of like classic. When Vince McMahon just basically laughed. and went, ho, ho, ho. Well, you're going to squash him in five minutes. So The Undertaker went and got John Cena in. And John Cena said, no, man. I've been running you down ragged. you got to squash me in five minutes. Apparently, The Undertaker said he was going to walk out. Now, I doubt that was ever going to happen. And maybe in a different interview or that interview, uh, he also mentioned how he did think about going to WCW when they became more of an adult TV product and the WWE was sticking with kids. I don't really believe that ever. You know what I mean? He's always seemed like a loyal dude. So I kind of feel like Undertaker has done so many interviews now. He understands. It's like Cody Rhodes. Lying is fun. <laughs> so I think he knows now to exaggerate the truth, which is sorry if we did drop out there for just one second. We will be back before you know it, and by the time you're hearing this, but I do believe we are back, so let me open that and keep an eye on it that way. Um, what was I saying? Uh, oh, yeah, about the fact that AEW um, uh, AEW don't have non-competes in their contract. So as you probably well know after all the releases, if you get let go from WWE, you have 90 days, and you still get paid for those 90 days. It's not like the, the worst thing ever is some people, some people paint out. The money keeps coming through. AEW doesn't have that in their contracts. And some people are going, oh, AEW is so stupid for not having it. And these are the same people that go, WWE is so terrible for having it. Does it really make a difference? I don't think so. Um, I guess there's more impact if you can leave one company and turn up in another company. But, I mean, take the CM Punk situation. People are now going, oh, CM Punk could turn up in WWE. He's under a multi-year deal. So if they are going to release him from his contract, they will put provisos in. Oh, and you can't work for WWE or New Japan or anyone else for X amount of time. I don't think non-competes are fair. I don't think you should do non-competes. I, like, I think they should be the option. So if you do get fired from WWE, they can say, right, do you want the non-compete paid for three months but you can't work anywhere else? Or do you just want to, you know, go out into the waters? Which is what happened to Malachi Black. He didn't have it. Well, Alistair Black. He didn't have any non-competes. But I saw some people moaning about that. I don't care, man. I, I don't think we should, um, we should be worried about stuff. Uh, about this oh we should talk about the bella twins too they are now the garcia twins i presume because they're no longer under wwe contract but this is not really a big story they're just starting a brand new reality tv show on um amazon and it's nothing to do with wwe so they're using their real names and i saw some people going oh i don't they better not go to aew why do you care if they go to aew they'll fit in that women's division they, they've done loads for wrestling Listen, I know loads of people that got into wrestling because of Total Divas. And the Bella Twins, excuse me, the Garcia Twins are a massive part of that. And why wouldn't you want someone to have a job, right? They're not going to make any difference to you. Not gonna be, have you seen AEW? They ain't going to take over the show. <laughs> it's not going to be a problem. Some people say horrible things online. I always think, put yourself in their shoes for a second. I'm not saying you can't be critical. I'm not saying that you can't say you don't want them there for whatever reason. But when you start being mean, that's different. You've crossed the line. You can tell me I'm an idiot. I am an idiot. My parents tell me every single day. However, put yourself in those shoes. Would you want to receive all that hate? Of course you wouldn't. Imagine you were planning to go to AEW, right? And you just got out of a contract. And someone said, oh, I don't want that moron being in there. You're like, but what did I do? I'm just trying to make a living. So that's how I see it. Just my two cents. Be nicer. It costs nothing to be nice. Shout out to Spaz Phoenix again in the super chat. Man, Spaz, you are just the best. Um, I need this Hell in a Cell match. Give me a purple cell on fire. This is interesting already. Give me goth rock dad edge. So brood edge on his daft throne. Definitely daft. And most of all, give me whatever the OTT Judgment Day version of the demon will be. Goofy wrestling for life with a fist. I don't want a purple cell. On fire's fine. That's absolutely ludicrous. So I'll take that. I want to go back to either a black or a silver cell. Don't like the red cell. Don't like the blue cell. Probably not even done the blue cell. 
I don't want a coloured cell. I mean, black or white or silver is totally fine. Because it's just hard to watch. I find it distracting. But yeah, no, that's what I want. I want it to be a demon. I want it to be a yeah, yeah, goth rock dad edge. Because I think actually they could probably come up with a more interesting thing than just your usual Hell in a Cell match. Now, Hell in a Cell is great. Do you need to add pomp and circumstance? No. But because um, uh, we've already seen the Seth Rollins one, I think trying to distinguish between the two is probably a good idea. So yeah, I look forward to that match. I think it'd be fun. And doing it at WrestleMania is just a great way to uh, to, to end the feud. Um, what else is going on? John Cena obviously saying that he's only got a few matches left in. Well, there is a rumor that he is going to work SummerSlam. And we're going to do Logan Paul versus John Cena. And I actually think that will probably happen. And the reason I think that will probably happen is just because it does the world of good for John Cena. Whether we like it or not, Dominic, uh, Dominic, Logan Paul is a massive star. And Dominic Mysterio is a massive star. But like he just is. And John Cena knows that. And John Cena knows that hitching his wagon to someone like Logan Paul is only going to, to help him, especially as he tries to enter the mainstream media. So I think we should probably do that. I don't know what's going to happen at WrestleMania. I would still have Austin Theory win. Um, kind of makes it interesting for Logan Paul because I think Seth Rollins will beat him at WrestleMania. And if Logan Paul is hanging around, he is going to have to get a victory at some point to keep his momentum up. But um, yeah, I, th I think they'll do that. I think they will do John Cena versus... Uh, um, uh, Logan Paul at SummerSlam and I think it'll be a big match I really do and I think it'll be an interesting match because obviously John Cena is a very different worker for someone like a Roman Reigns or a Miz for example but um, yeah I would say watch this space it would not surprise me if that's already been locked in Cena's film commitments uh, notwithstanding I also saw Brian Gewurz have not pronounced his name right at all Gerwitz whatever it is he was talking on a podcast or something and he mentioned how all this nonsense about The Rock not being able to get in ring shape for Wrestlemania is baloney and it took on a life of its own so that's interesting. I don't know whether that's them pissed off. Who knows? At this stage, I would imagine it's more likely going to be WrestleMania 40. Although if you put a gun to my head, I don't think The Rock is ever going to wrestle again. I don't see where he's going to get the time. The clock is only ticking. I do think he'll be announced for the Hall of Fame at some point. At the moment, we don't know. Talk about the Hall of Fame. Great Mooters going in. Uh, it's been heavily rumored that Batista's going in, and he said he's trying to sort that out. Obviously, he was meant to go in over the pandemic. And the other rumor is that Mick Foley is going to induct Stacey Keebler. We talked about this in the other show, uh, that Mick Foley said he was going to induct someone. He was very surprised to hear from them. Now Stacey Keebler's name is everywhere. Great! I'm happy with all of them. The great Mooter especially, because I don't think he ever wrestled in the WWF or WWE. And Ric Flair's going to induct him. But he had such a storied career, and he's such a hero, and he's such a legend, that... I just they're the type of people that should go in i know we can argue about the credibility of the hall of fame but look the people that are going in are going to feel completely made up and i think that's nice it makes me feel warm and fuzzy in my tum tum but i don't see how you can't put someone like the great mooter in i think it's massively important that you do because again just go look at his career did absolutely everything dude totally smashed it and you know literally did so until you know a few weeks ago when he when he finally retired other than that i don't think there's much else going on as i just look through my notes to make sure that i haven't uh, missed anything there was a funny um one of the former writers of WWE, I've forgotten his name now, Dave Schilling, I think, was doing a live uh, tweet thread of WrestleMania 35. And apparently when they were planning the show and they came up with obviously, you know, Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin as the retirement match. And everyone said, Vince, we do that, the fans will hate it. Apparently Vince McMahon said, flub the fans. And he laughed. So do with that what you will. I, to this day, I don't think that Baron Corbin was the worst plan. I don't. Same with Brock Lesnar beating The Undertaker's streak. We just had to do something with it. That was the drop ball. If Baron Corbin had used that to go up to the next platform or talk about it all the time or increase his momentum or win a championship, whatever it may have been, squash John Cena at SummerSlam, then I think it would have been wonderful. I think the problem was we beat, let's say that John Cena beat it, which is what everybody wanted. And then John Cena just went, ah, who cares? You know, what did you do that for? That was ridiculous. So I think that was my problem with it. But look, it's no surprise to me that sometimes Vince McMahon says flub the fans. I think we've seen some booking where that makes it obvious that's why it's always best to just shrug your shoulders and go, oh, well, let's move on to the next one. And I know, well, wrestling's never going to get better that way. Well, it didn't get better going the other way, did it? <laughs> so you should always put your entertainment and your self-enjoyment first. My man, Juan Ortiz in the super chat. Good to see you, Juan. Thank you so much. Hey, Simon, I'm just here to say that Dynamite last night was really great, especially the MJF Bar Mitzvah segment, BCC versus Dark Order and the main event. Juan, could not agree with you more. Genuinely, I mean, I'm being a bit hyperbole with it. The opening segment is one of my favorite in AEW history. That BCC Dark Order match was just so good. And Stu Grayson being back in Canada, probably need to give him a deal. The Dark Order is better with him in it. And yeah, the main event. If you haven't seen it, the Elite versus Jericho Appreciation side versus the House of Black, it may not be your cup of tea. I would still go and check it out. Fans going crazy, amazing moves. The way they structure the match together, I do not understand how they, uh, how they do it. But yeah, it is... Um, 
it's just great. It really, really is. I, I watch them as a wrestler myself, and I'm like, holy crap, they're a level above me. Although, I think I said this on Tuesday. I'll say it again for anyone new. I do want to thank anyone that said uh, nice stuff about my sob pro match with Joe Connors. They keep coming in and people saying that I was too harsh on myself. I'm always self-critical. That's just my that's just my way. But that really has meant a lot to me. So thank you so much. Because again, there's still a lot of people that like to take shots at all time when it comes to wrestling, which is fine. You put yourself in the public space. That's what you have to expect. Shout out to Tom Talks Rubbish again, the super chat. Big love, Simon. Your words on my boxing really inspired me. Well, it's amazing, dude. The fact you're doing it. The fact you're pushing through and getting it done is tremendous. And definitely keep doing it. And absolutely, again, like I said, I will definitely get... It's not going to be this week. I can't lie. I have no time. As soon as I finish this thing, I have a three-hour call. Cool. And then tomorrow I'm out all day and I'm not here for the weekend because I'm in Kent and Huddersfield. Then we'll get to Monday and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll sort something out. Right? There's a few other things I do want to talk about, uh, but we've got a few minutes. We've got about 20 minutes left. Get your questions in. Any super chats, 100% will, uh, will be answered, but just spam the chat as much as you can with questions and we will, uh, we will get to them. Um, there was something else I wanted to talk about. I don't remember what it was. It was probably something amazing. But... <laughs> <laughs> we're never going to talk about it now well i do I, i'll just say this if you're watching on youtube right now please do like the video share the video subscribe do all that stuff helps the video helps the channel overall check out some other videos again all supported by patreon.com for us simon of 316 even if you give me a dollar helps massively massively shout out to the guy that came in at 50 dollars today i'm so sorry i don't have your name i meant to write it down but i'll definitely give you a shout on the next podcast your t-shirt will be coming to you very soon as well as all the other things you get for being a 50 dollar patron videos postcard all this kind of nonsense and uh, Cameo as well, personalized videos. You've got a birthday or some kind of event coming up. I'm happy to do that on there. Really enjoy doing them. They're a battle of laughs. And of course, my wrestling tees. ProWrestlingTees.com for slash Simon Miller. We've got warm and fuzzy tees. We've got surprise roll-up tees. We've got hardest part of the ring tees. We've got ring name tees. And we've got wide tees coming. And we've got precipice, octopus tees coming. We've got the bunch. Thank you so much to anyone who has bought one so far. Uh, right, Bushin Rayu Cat has come in the super chat as well. Thank you, my man. Sorry I'm late, Simon, but two things. You never have to be sorry here, my friend. I appreciate you. And I definitely got your name wrong, as I always do. One, the bar mitzvah was the best segment, question mark. Come on, sorry, but the MJF Jericho musical blew it away, in my opinion. Well, as we talked about at the start of the show, and you did say you were late, to be fair, it was just the Jewish tie-in. To see somebody wearing stuff that I have worn in my own childhood and talk about bar mitzvahs and have hum nagila and chairs, etc., it just spoke to me as a Jewish person that was brought up. And that's why it's personal to me. Uh, I actually wasn't a massive... No, I, I, when it comes to the MJF Jericho musical thing, I like the fact we did it and do more of that. Take risks, especially in a pandemic. My gosh, of course. But it actually wasn't my favorite thing that either of those two th people have done. And I think the way that they approach wrestling, I actually would have preferred them to do something else. However, c completely contradictorily and hypocritically, I love the fact that they did do that because it took you know courage, I thought, and it was brave. So that was awesome. Number two, when I make you for my 2K23 core, appreciate it. What should I put on your shirt? Warm and fuzzy in the tum-tum. That's kind of taken on a life of its own now. It's well and far the best-selling tea on pro wrestling tees. And never forget, somebody once said to me, Simon, you can't say that. I said it once because I thought it'd be funny. And then I won't say who it was. They were being nice. They were like, Simon, they're going to murder you. And I was like, oh, yeah? Well, I may get murdered to start with, but I'll resurrect myself. <laughs> and I will, uh, I will sort it out. I just like being dumb, man. Why can't you say warm and fuzzy in my tum-tum? Of course you can. I th what I like about it, we're going to get a bit existential here, is the coolest thing that's always happened to me throughout my life is that people have gone like, Simon, you look like you're a tough guy. Go to the gym, i got a shaved head, and who knows what else, right? And, and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But I was always like, well, that's not who I am as a person. So I want to make sure to get that kind of message out there that you should never judge a book by its cover. So I will be an idiot and I will be a moron and I will say things that eight-year-olds should say because they don't care. Why do we not care? Who cares? It's stupid. And I think, the, I think that's probably why we've been able to develop this little platform that we do have because maybe in many ways I'm a con contradiction in terms. Like I like going to the gym, I like wrestling, I like snorting, blah, Goldberg. But I also like being a moron, I like being a fool, I like taking the mick out of myself. I have no shame. I have no, um, you know, I have no, not no pride. <laughs> that's not the right word. I can't think what the thing is now. I don't, my, I don't take myself seriously at all and I don't think that you should. So um, that's why I like Warm and Fuzzy so much. It kind of ties into sort of the way that I see the world. And long may it continue. My man Spaz Phoenix in the, um, in the Super Chat again, good guy, just says Cody Balor SummerSlam. Yeah, you could do that given that Finn Balor's a heel. In fact, we should do that. The feuds for Cody for me, 
LA Knight, after he's getting all these reactions, do it. He can lose. It's not going to be a problem. He'll get himself back over on the microphone. Bronson Reed, put him up against a monster. The Gunther match. Finn Balor, absolutely. You could do something with Baron Corbin, given that he squashed him. There's loads of things we can do. I'm not talking about pay-per-view matches here. One of my favorite things about AEW is because the pay-per-views are stretched out throughout the year, we can do these kind of slightly bigger matches that you probably never see for a championship on free TV. I think WWE could absolutely utilize that once Roman has lost the championship, because that's not what he's done. Not what he did. We can do Cody versus the Usos individual ones solo sokoa randy orton come back you could do that program could even do that on pay-per-view given their history matt riddle etc so that's one of the main reasons i want cody rhodes to win not only for the story and because i think it would be badass but i think it opens the door to do other things that would make raw and smackdown more interesting and give you those matches that's probably going to peak ratings that's what we want right we want everyone to do uh, everyone to do better shout out to my man sean I never get his last name right. We're just going to call him Gear Corn. It's not, his, it's not how you pronounce it. He's told me before. I'm an idiot. I'm a moron, but I love Sean. Uh, do you think MJF has what it takes to go on a Roman Reigns-like run? I don't really see anyone taking the belt off him anytime soon. No, I know what you mean. Anytime I book his demise, I'm like, well, no, you can't do it. You can't do it because he has to hold on to it. I would imagine that we get to all out or full gear. So we're talking eight months to a year and Adam Cole beats him. And I'm repeating myself now, but that's truly what I think we will do. And I think from, you know, the end of March when Adam Cole is back properly, if we book him right and we push him right and he continues to climb the ladder, I think we will be asking for it. I think we'll be clamoring for it. And I think that um, it will establish Adam Cole as their top baby face, which is what they need right now. So that's what I would do. Whether I'm not going to do that, I don't know. But yes, you could ha you could absolutely could have MGF go on a Roman Reigns type run. Don't forget there was a time when people were bored of the Roman Reigns run. And the reason it got a, a fire lit under its ass again is because of the stories, the angles, the Kevin Owens stuff, the Sami Zayn stuff. So as long as you plan it out and as long as you have all those things planned, there's no reason why you can't do it. And you can just sort of uh, ride it off into the sunset. And it's only going to help MGF. I already think he's a bigger star <coughs> from all of this. So let's continue to build and continue to, to, to get him over. Uh, someone says, unpopular opinion, but MJF is only champion because he wanted to leave and Tony gave it to him not to leave. Now, MJF is going to stay champion until his contract ends to get a better contract. I mean, I don't buy into stuff like that. I don't think Tony Khan would be held over a barrel in that way. I think Maxwell Jacob Freeman was always destined to be the champion at this point. And um, I think he's going great so far. I enjoy seeing him. I think he's a terrific performer. And I know he'd tell me to flub off <laughs> if he... Uh, if you heard me saying that. Somebody says, warm and fuzzy, my tum-tum should play when you get to WWE and you come storming out. Look, I really appreciate this. If I came storming out in WWE with no kind of intro, people are like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> who the hell is this random bald guy? Do you think there's any way that Cody loses at Mania? I can't see him losing. Yes, I'm going to make this my one-off show at the moment. Because again, I'll be quick. Roman Reigns versus The Rock was the original plan. The Rock was never going to win as far as I'm concerned. Maybe that's why he didn't want to do the match. We don't know. So maybe WWE already has it planned in until SummerSlam. You don't know. Especially if we are going to do Logan Paul versus John Cena, plus you have the Cody Rhodes Roman Reigns rematch, maybe that makes it an arena sized event and they're going to try and get back into an arena. So there you go. Um, do we have anything else? China should get her solo induction. Um, yeah, she probably should. Well, she should. Whether that's going to happen, I don't know. I, we, we just don't know. Somebody else has mentioned um, has mentioned that too. I can't see it happening, which is a shame. Wrestling politics is uh, ridiculous. Simon, how's your day going, sir? It's been busy today. Busy. AEW ups and downs in the morning. Then I had a bunch of other stuff to do. Again, I got something at 7 o'clock that I had to prep for, so I was doing that. Yeah, it's been a juggling kind of a day. And I had to get to the gym. First time I've been to the gym in 10 days as I finally recovered from this illness. It was kind of pathetic, but <laughs> at, least I was, um, at least I was able to, to go. Um, and lots of people say warm and fuzzy in the tum tum. I like this. This makes me happy. This should be the way to be. So again, any kind of questions, just throw them in the chat and we will get to them. Otherwise, though, we get to a weekend where there's not actually that much going on wrestling-wise. Obviously, we have SmackDown and Rampage uh, on uh, tomorrow night. The Rampage spoilers are out there. I'm not going to talk about them because I don't want to spoil it for you. It sounds like an okay show. There are certainly a couple of matches on there that I'm excited about and feuds that we... Um, that we do start do we have anything planned for smackdown obviously we have the sheamus versus um uh drew mcintyre match apparently drew mcintyre was super sick last week and he still uh he still did the match <laughs> this has happened a lot to drew recently so without wanting to sound like his dad i <laughs> i do hope that he's um i do hope that he's okay and otherwise in terms of that match as i just try and find a smackdown preview now that's March the 10th. I don't want March the 10th. I want the one from next week. I don't think we're going to get one, are we? No, no one's posted one yet. Well, in terms of that match um, sort of by itself, 
I think maybe we need a draw. I want the triple threat match at WrestleMania. I think the fans were chanting for it. I think you um, open the door to have people believe that Gunther's going to lose if there's Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. And I also think that you can then start doing a Drew McIntyre Sheamus program, should you so wish, either for the Intercontinental Champion or without it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, <coughs> it's it's an interesting one. I don't know which direction they're going to go in. I, d- cause you, I don't think you can do Sheamus versus Gunther, only because we've seen it a couple of times. And they're not going to top what they did at Clash of the Castles. So there's no point. Uh, there's no point trying. But you can do Drew versus Gunther. That's a really interesting match. And you absolutely can add Sheamus into that for the dynamic. So, I kind of hope they do do that. I will take it. I know it's a bit silly and it's a bit sports entertainment, but there's nothing wrong with that. So, uh, yeah, I hope they do that. Someone says you're missing the DSP interview, Simon. DSP. DSP. Ricky Starks? No. Uh, Juice Robinson? No. And I'm definitely forgetting. I mean, that's so- it's going to be really, really obvious, and I'm being an idiot. Somebody can tell me in the chat and we can talk about it. Uh, did I see the Shockmaster on AEW? I did, and I went crazy because goofy wrestling for life. Uh, I'd like your opinion on this. What's your opinion on movies that show men in embarrassing situations that will get you made fun of, and how would you handle those situations in general? Um, I don't really know what that means. I'll be completely honest with you. It's just a movie is the way that I see it. And I always say, look, if you're in an embarrassing situation, just laugh it off and shrug your shoulders. We're human beings. We're always going to... um, You're always going to get in situations that you don't like. So the best thing you can do is laugh it off and go, well, I'll learn from next time and I'll never do it again. We all make mistakes. It's fine. Uh, Dark Side Phil interview. What Dark Side Phil interview? I've clearly missed something here. I'm an idiot. But I am an idiot. We all know this. Uh, Simon, have you had any talks with, with AEW? No. Um, but of course, they're coming over here in the summer, I believe, or whenever it's going, I don't know where it's going to be, for the UK shows. And I'm going to shoot my shot. I've said it once, I've said it twice. Of course I will. Why wouldn't we try and do this? Uh, would you be willing to create an alternate real ring character where war paint and armor similar to a Greek warrior and play a bad guy? Yeah, I'll do anything in wrestling if somebody pitches it to me, as long as it didn't look a bit crap. <laughs> That would be fine. And of course, I play a bad guy in UPW, and it's some of my favorite things to do. Hey, Simon. Um, I'm from Kent, right between Dartford and Bexley Heath. When was you last in Kent, and do you like theme parks? <laughs> if so, do you know of Effling in Holland? If not, go there. Uh, I mean, the last time I was in Kent was probably when I wrestled for UPW, which I'm back on Saturday doing again. Uh, no, I don't like theme parks. I don't like roller coasters. They, they freak me out. Um, but I do go to the Netherlands a bit. Because I have my girlfriend's family lives there, so yes, I suppose maybe one day I will go to that theme. It's very unlikely. No one on my side or her side of family likes theme parks, uh, but you, uh, but you just don't know. Um, and here's an example scenario for the embarrassing thing: somebody stumbles upon you and your significant other at the wrong time in some secluded area. Well, that's on you. If you're going to be in some secluded area publicly, and then you get publicly found out for it, you probably shouldn't be doing it. And also, it's actually illegal. These are the weirdest questions that we've had for ages. So instead, I'll shout out my man, Sean, in the super chat. Thank you, Sean. You're always being a good guy. I appreciate it. Here's his opinion on the SmackDown stuff. Make the Intercontinental title match a three-way. Let Sheamus pin Drew so Gunther stays strong. Give Sheamus his grand slam. Then Gunther can get it back at Money in the Bank or something like that. Dude, love it. Love it. I think you're ticking their boxes there. Then you can carry on the Gunther, uh, the Sheamus versus Drew McIntyre feud. I would actually have Drew McIntyre win it from Sheamus and probably put Gunther into a position where he could start fighting for the world championship. But I think that's the best way to do it. You have Sheamus pin Drew after Gunther has done something. Um, Gunther, you could have a rematch or something, but Gunther then spirals off to do something with Cody or whatever. Do the Drew versus um, Sheamus match. Drew McIntyre becomes a champion. Then maybe you can work Gunther back in. I think that's the way we want to do it here. We want to elongate it and extend it as much as we can do because it's top-tier talent, right? And it's just making the Intercontinental title feel more important. And one of the best things, if not the best thing, that Triple H has done is the US Championship. Important. Intercontinental Championship. Important. I mean, there was a time when the IC Championship didn't even get on WrestleMania. And this year, it could be three of the best guys in the company. And the US Championship is John Cena versus Austin Theory. Say what you like about Austin Theory. He's clearly the future of the company. That's how they're going to push him. Whether he makes it or not, we don't know. I hope that he does. And John Cena is John Cena. Right now, he's up there. He's like a rock. He's like a Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's like an Undertaker. He will forever be seen as an iconic person when it comes to that company. So if you work with him, that's fantastic. And once again, the US Championship is on the line. So yeah, that'd be awesome. I do believe at WrestleMania 40, we'll do Gunther versus Brock Lesnar, for people asking. I actually, I saw a report saying that they don't want Gunther to lose right now. And I was like, you know what? That actually makes sense. It probably does make sense to keep him as um, protected as possible. So uh, I would, um, yeah, I'd probably aim for that. I think that would be good. That's the ultimate big man slapping man meat match. 
And if Gunther beats Brock Lesnar and then Brock Lesnar rides off into the sunset, awesome. Great. And I don't even mind the Omos match anymore. Let's say it's a train wreck. That'd be funny. There's at least going to be 13, 14 matches over two nights of WrestleMania. One of them can be absolutely crazy, right? Uh, Gunther and Cody need a rematch from Royal Rumble. I think we have to pay off that, right? I think we do. I wouldn't even mind it, right? It sounds crazy. WrestleMania 40, Gunther is a champion. We've split the belts up by this point. Brock Lesnar is his challenger. Gunther beats him. He becomes the end of level boss. Again, Brock is done. And now he's the mega champion because he gets that kind of rub from the Undertaker streak because he beat Brock on WrestleMania. And that way, him being Omos is good too. We don't have to worry about it. So, yep, yeah, that's the kind of stuff that I would do. I think, you know, the people right now, I don't care about age in wrestling. LA Knight, make him a megastar. Gunther, make him a megastar. Cody, make him a megastar. The Usos, make him a megastar. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Austin Theory. <coughs> this is why I'm so excited about WWE. And AEW could do the same thing, but we're just doing WWE chat at the moment. There are so many guys in 12 months time can be in a better position than they are now. And all of them, you could argue, are viable world title contenders, especially if we split up the belts. And I am intrigued about where this Baron Corbin thing is going. The only reason I'm worried is because so many times WWE tell me they're going to do something, the Hurt Business, and then it goes away. So I'm hoping that this Baron Corbin thing goes somewhere and he has a little bit of a revamp. But he could be a number, he could be a number one world title contender too when you split up the belts. So what have I just named there? Eight, nine, ten people? So I keep my, I keep my fingers crossed. I honestly think Cody Rhodes should challenge for the NXT championship. His father built NXT and I want to see Rhodes have the NXT title. I understand your logic there, but it just doesn't have the same importance. It doesn't carry the same weight. Not that many no, people watch NXT, but not as much as the other shows. People be more impressed if he becomes universal super duper champion or whatever, or whatever we're calling it. But I do understand your point of view. I do understand the um, the way you're uh, the way you're approaching it. And uh, I'm I'm really excited about WrestleMania. I'm super pumped that I'm going now. I'm super pumped that I got a bunch of matches because that's never happened before. I had a couple last year, so one last year. So to have three yet this year is is amazing. Like who the hell wants to have me on their show? It, it, it's great. And we're going to do live ups and downs, and we're going to go to as many shows as possible, and we're going to get interviews, and I'm going to sell merchandise, <laughs> and do all of this stuff. Um, I just think wrestling is great right now. I, I really do. Uh, Forbidden Door 2, I want to see Okada versus Omega, title versus title. I wouldn't bet on that one. I think July is probably a little close, but we should do it. And shout out to William Bryce Wrestling in the Super Chat. Thank you, William. Massively appreciate that. Helps so much. Uh, man, well, this is just lovely. I've just read the first line. You inspire me professionally and mentally. That always blows my brain. So thank you, my friend. I am a ring announcer, commentator, wrestler, and I'm trying to build more of a YouTube presence, including belt review videos. Always nice. That's a niche. People like niches. What advice do you have someone trying to follow your template? Well, I do get asked this a lot, and I always do appreciate it. And what, what I tell to everyone is, first of all, you've got to love it. You've got to be passionate about it, because YouTube is a harder gig than maybe it uh, it makes out. I mean, like it's not a, it's not a bad gig. It's not like a, a gig that's going to kick your ass. You're not working down the mines or anything like that. But you've got to be dedicated to it. You've got to make sure that you believe in what you're doing. Again, I started doing positive wrestling reviews because that's how I felt. So I was like, okay, well, that's what I want to double down on. And ultimately, you just got to build up a CV of videos. So continue to make videos. If wrestling belts are your thing, do that. Keep doing it over and over again because ultimately, an opportunity will come up. If you put yourself enough into everything, eventually there will be an opportunity. It always starts with hard work. And if you've got this whole YouTube channel that you can send to someone just to look at all these videos I've made, you don't have to make anything for them on the spot. You haven't got a rush. You can actually show them some content that you put a lot of time and effort into, which is what I did. Because I used to work in um, uh, video game YouTube. So I had a bunch of videos that I'd already I'd already done. Um, so just do that, my friend. And, uh, what was the other ones? A commentator, a wrestler, and an announcer. Do all of that, man. I do all of that too. And sometimes people go, what are you doing? I'm just, you're just embracing it. And that's the key. Make sure you're enjoying yourself. Make sure you're passionate about it. And make sure you wake, every, wake up every other day just feeling a little bit more creative and a little bit more pumped about the the stuff that you're going to do. That's the most important thing. And I think it's awesome that you're doing it. If anything else comes along and you want to add that to your bow too, you should do that as well. But it always starts with hard work. I know I sound like The Rock, but it's true. That's that, that's the, the way that I established myself on what culture was never saying no. So if they message me on a Sunday saying, do you want to make this Brock Lesnar just been suspended video, which is what happened, real story. I said yes, and I just kept doing it and doing it. And look, my early videos are rubbish. They are. Like, I, I look terrified. It's deer in the headlights. But I kept working on it, and I kept plying away. And now I'm very blessed to say that it is my one of my major sources of my income. Um, and I, there's a lot of luck there, and I wouldn't be able to do it without any of you guys. You bought my house. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes wrestlers say don't own my house um but the, I, I think you just got to dedicate yourself to these things and i truly do wish you all the best man and i hope you totally smash it because it can happen and it doesn't happen overnight it takes a long time but stick with it and know that i believe in you 
And uh, we will finish with I Have an Idea, which is an amazing username in the Super Chat. Thank you so much, man. Who has a WrestleMania booking thing. I like this. We're after WrestleMania. How about after WrestleMania, we have Austin Theory versus Solo Sokoa. Like it already. Make Solo the US champ and have a mid-card version of the Bloodline with Usos. With the Usos and Solo, with Solo as the focal point. My man, that's a good idea. I ain't going to argue with that. Now, the rumor is, get this, mini spoilers, not really. Solo Sokoa is going to get a massive push after WrestleMania and maybe even feud with Roman Reigns. Do you know how amazing that is? Do you know how awesome that would be? Do you know how pumped that makes me? And I think Solo Sokoa should win. Now, obviously, it's not going to be as much to beat him now. But that's what I want to see. I want to see Solo Sokoa versus Roman Reigns. Maybe Roman Reigns is the baby face and Solo Sokoa is the heel. And Solo Sokoa, he gets that damn spike and he spikes it in Roman's face and he gets the one, two, three. Solo Sokoa, as far as I'm concerned, has had the best transition from NXT maybe ever. He never skipped a beat. It felt like he'd been there the whole time. We had the swerve twist at Clash of the Castle. I'm a huge fan of Solo Sokoa, man. And I just hope he goes on to better and bigger things. He is tremendous and he gets me excited in my tum-tum, which sounds very, very weird. But I totally agree with that. Let's focus the show on him. Even if it's not around the bloodline, let's focus the show on him anyway. And haven't beat Jey Uso. Haven't beat Jimmy Uso. Haven't beat Paul Heyman, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. Everyone, Ric Flair, bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> but so let's go over i mean it when i like someone i really like him and he barely said one word into a microphone so that's probably going to get him over even more comes across as a killer that man totally gets it and i'm so excited to um to see what he's going to do um and someone very nicely said you made me interested in wrestling again that's cool lots of people say that to me especially after progress show is interestingly i never thought that was going to be a takeaway of what i did but flub me sideways as i'm i'm proud that it is um I don't even know how I saw ups and downs back then. But now I feel like it's become this cool community that's a safe space. I know, silly modern day words, but we all know what we're talking about. And we can just enjoy wrestling for what it is. That's how I see ups and downs these days. It's a community and it's a way to keep wrestling fun because that's what it should be. I'm not going to be able to say anything else more poetic than that. So instead, I'm going to plug a bunch of stuff. <laughs> just wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we're going to keep to this Tuesday, Thursday schedule as best as we can. It'll be at least once a week, if not twice. Check out the other videos on my YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do so now. Just engage with the videos as much as possible because YouTube loves it. Should have mentioned too, if you're into your fitness stuff, grillamind.com forward slash Simon. You just go to Simon get 10% off. These are what I use. These are my supplements. I love them. I think they're great. And it's a pleasure to be affiliated with more plates, more dates. Give me a follow on social media on 6, Instagram and Twitter. It's good for my ego. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Simon 316. If you want to support the podcast, that would rock as we fall off the internet again but luckily i caught that one so hopefully we can get back on super quick if it dropped then i do apologize sorry for the podcast folk um cameo personalized videos pro wrestling tees.com for us simon miller for a bunch of that stuff and because my internet is probably going to drop out again let's just wrap it off there thank you for joining me thank you for giving me your time thank you for supporting me and thank you for just being nice i massively do appreciate it and i'll see you on the next one which will be next tuesday where's my damn button there it is take care see you soon <laughs>